everyone, Erica here from High 49 rc Today I want to show you how to make a lighting controller or a winch controller for your RC car using a old stripped out servo. Because if you're anything like me, you definitely hold on to your stripped servos because they just feel like you should. I mean, you spent like, what, 150 bucks on them and you can't get a rebuild kit for it, but you feel like you should hang on to it, right? Or you're like me and you just buy a whole box of them for 25 bucks for the swap meet. Um, so yeah, I'm working on my Slash, and or my Splash, my water-cooled Slash. If you haven't seen that, go check out the series. I'll put a card up in the top. Um, I want to make a on-off controller, basically, for my cooling system. So that's what I'm going to be using this for, but you can use it to control a free spool winch, or a light bar, or whatever other feature you want that just needs an on-off switch from your radio on your RC. Once the cover of the servo, the back cover, has been pulled off, um, what we're going to need to do is get to the potentiometer. So usually these little boards will just pull out, sometimes there'll be a little screw in them. Just pull it out to the side, and there's a little screw down at the very bottom, at least on my servo. Some of them have a screw up in the top, but this one has a little screw that holds the potentiometer in down here. So we're just going to quickly undo that, and that should free up the potentiometer for us. Let me pull this half apart, I guess. Maybe see if I can push it out. Yep, there we go. There's our potentiometer and our board. And I'm dropping parts everywhere. That's okay. Um, at this point, now what we need to do is hook this end of the wire up to uh, your receiver. And we're gonna have to make sure that the motor spins when we want it to and doesn't when we don't. I've grabbed my splash. This here is the receiver for it. Hooked up a battery real quick. Um, we're gonna plug this in. And as you can hear, the motor is running in this. So we need to make the motor stop. And to do that, so you, you want your switch on the radio to be in its off position, whatever position you want that to be. And then we're gonna turn this pot until the motor stops. So right there, it stopped. There, it's going again. There. So at this point, that is our off position and then if we go and flip the switch on my radio which is right here it turns on that is the essence of how this is working basically right now the servo thinks that it's in the center so it doesn't need to move but as soon as you give an input which on my radio is to go all the way to one side basically if the servo was acting as a servo the horns gonna go all the way to one extreme which is why I just told it to do, but the potentiometer is not moving because when you tell it to do that, the horn is on the potentiometer and so as soon as the potentiometer goes and hits the point that it needs to be at, the motor will basically stop running. We need to make sure that this potentiometer doesn't move to maintain our on and off positions um, of our motor or lights or whatever it is. Um, so just grab a bit of your favorite CA glue. I prefer the Maxi Cure Extra Thick and just gob a bunch of that on there, like so. I've got some accelerator, you can just wait for it to dry if you do please. Okay, there we go. Now that that's glued, um, that pot's not going to move, so it'll maintain our on and off positions basically, our 0 and 100. Um, now you can just clip off or unsolder the leads from the motor, and at this point, you can leave it as is, or I like to use a bit of really thick heat shrink tubing around all of this mess, which I don't know where it's currently gone. Um, it's around here somewhere. Ah, here it is. Some really thick heat shrink. Um, this is big enough to go around all that. You can use something like a lighter or a heat gun, heat it up. This stuff in particular has like hot glue inside of it, so it'll keep everything kind of together, which is nice. And then we can basically just slip all this together. Um, bring bring all the leads out one end. That's not a bad idea. Um, put the pot there. Try and make sure the contacts aren't hitting anything else. It's, it shouldn't be an issue, but you know, just in case. And then this can just slide inside there. Just like so. And Basically, once you shrink that down, you're going to have a nice little packaged on-off switch. 
And there you go, there's my finished lighting controller or winch controller, on off switch, third channel on off, whatever the hell you want to call it. I added some longer leads on this side like I mentioned. Um, I shrunk the heat shrink and I just gotta cut this little extra bit off but otherwise it's pretty compact. Um, I put the leads out the side where the potentiometer a little like turny dealy is. Um, definitely streamlines it a bit. So yeah, that's pretty much all it is. Pretty straightforward. With that, um, my lighting controller is done, or in this case, my cooling system controller is done. So um, yeah, hopefully this turns into a comprehensible tutorial. I feel like I did a really bad job of explaining stuff, so I haven't done a tutorial in so long. So hopefully this turns out okay. Hopefully I can edit it together to be, you know, understandable. <laughs> So yeah, with that guys, thank you so much for watching, please leave a like, hit that subscribe button, comment down below if you are excited to see the completed Slash project, or Splash, as I'm calling it. Um, follow me on Instagram at high 49 underscore rc support me on Patreon if you can, and join the Discord server as well, lots of fun stuff going on there. Um, become a member as well, if you so choose. And that's all for me guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.